Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar number 10 in the Kepware 2020 webinar series from Mac Solutions. Today's webinar is on the subject of OPC comms with bespoke devices. So here's the agenda. We're going to be looking at what are bespoke devices that live on the shop floor. What are some of the challenges you face when getting communications with bespoke devices? And then how the user configurable driver Yukon works. And then a little bit towards the end about uh, a new driver that's coming through called UDD. So who is this webinar aimed at? It's aimed at project engineers who are designing systems for the shop floor and also perhaps people who are looking to uh, monitor and maintain shop floor devices. So let's look at bespoke devices on the shop floor. So on the right hand side here, we have an OPC client and it is talking to the Kepware OPC server. And this Kepware OPC server doesn't have a license for Yukon and it needs to communicate to the devices which are shown below. So we have a PLC on the left hand side and Kepware has over 150 different drivers, has drivers for all the mainstream PLCs. So that one's catered for by the, your instance of Kep server, by the drivers that are already included in the installation which you make. But below you will have devices which are a bit unusual. You'll have some sort of scanner, you've got some sort of weighing system, you've got a, a weather station, basically devices which are a little bit unusual uh, on the shop floor, but they exist. Um, but perhaps it's a custom electronics black box that someone's created for you, or perhaps a piece of equipment that came in with a control board inside, which is custom electronics and some sort of comms port. So you won't be able to find a driver within the Kepware library to, to suit all of these devices. So how do you how do you handle them? Because this OPC client on the right hand side wants device wants values from all of these devices. So in order to get to started with communicating to those bespoke or unusual devices, what are the challenges that you face? Well, the first one is actually finding the right documentation, especially if you're dealing with a device that's a legacy device, perhaps an, uh, an old device that's been provided on uh, with bespoke electronics, as I mentioned before, you'll have to find details of the communications that that device supports. That's the first challenge is actually finding that documentation especially for the devices that are old. Once you've found that documentation, then the next thing is to examine it and figure out what type of communications you're talking about here. If it's an ASCII based protocol that's documented in the documentation, which uses a poll and response type of communications, that's generally okay. If you're dealing with devices which don't use a poll and response, but will sit on the shop floor and send the data out in an unsolicited fashion, they're a little more, a bit more tricky. Um, under that, such circumstances, the KEB server software would be need to be listening for the incoming unsolicited messages from that device and then be able to strip the, the values out of it. Um, this is especially tricky if the device is sending unsolicited messages which are not consistent in nature, if they, uh, they change under different circumstances. The other thing that uh, you find you have to co uh, cater for within the protocols are CRCs. Um, most CRCs in, in protocols I've come across follow some sort of standard. There are standards for CRCs and the KEB server Yukon driver has about 30 different types. Um, but again, I have come across devices that have CRCs that have been made up uh, by the manufacturer themselves on a non-standard. Uh, that they're a little bit more tricky. Um, one thing to be very cautious of is protocols, serial protocols, which are binary in nature. Um, Modbus RTU is an example of a binary based serial protocol. Generally speaking, if, you're, if you find that the protocol in the documentation is referred to as a binary protocol, then that's going to be very hard to, um, to cater for, uh, except if you write your own custom application for it. Once you've looked at the protocol, then it's a matter of then looking at the connection types. Are we talking about a device which hangs on the end of an RS-232 or 42 or 485 connection? 
or is it a device that's sitting on Ethernet? Or is it a, some hybrid of the two, which is a device which is serial in nature, but has an Ethernet port, and the protocol actually embeds a serial packet over an Ethernet delivery layer? So that's what you would call Ethernet encapsulation or serial over Ethernet. Once you've looked at the connection types, you can then move on to look at the device settings themselves, especially if it's an RS-232 or 422 or 485 serial device. Uh, we're talking about the uh, number of stop bits, the parity and the flow control, which the device use, uses. Um, if you have a device that uses active flow control, then this can be quite tricky. Now, what I mean by active flow control, which is flow control, which is control, the pins of the flow control are being controlled during the cycle of the comms. So you have pins like RTS and CTS, uh, clear to send or ready to send. Those, if they are toggled as the comms happened on and off at different parts of the protocol structure or during the protocol flow, then that can be tricky. If, however, you can suppress the flow control by linking pins out, perhaps linking CTS to RTS so the device is effectively always active, then that's good. Uh, those are generally uh, ha not too bad to handle. So we've been, uh, I've been referring to this driver called Yukon through this presentation. So what is Yukon? So on the right hand side, we have the OPC client connecting to KEP server and the KEP server has the Yukon driver. What the Yukon driver is, is a way of creating a user configured protocol. So within the Yukon, you configure the structure of the message. So here's a, here's a message you might send out to a device. ST is the start character. One might be the, uh, the address of the device, especially if it's on a multi-drop like RS-485. Then the instruction RV100, read value from register 100. Then you might have a CRC, and then you'd have carriage return line feed. So that type of protocol structure is not uncommon for a serial, a legacy serial device uh, to accept. And that's the sort of thing that you can configure quite easily into Yukon. When the OPC client requests a value from the device, th that structure above there is sent into the transmission buffer of Yukon and sent to the device. When the device responds, the Yukon response buffer then accepts the response message and here is a typical response message. And you can see what's been added to the response is the value, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the value you want to pass back to your OPC client. So within Yukon, you set the rules to find this, this value, one, two, three, four, five, where it is in the response string. And then when the Yukon response buffer receives the value, that value is stripped out and passed back to the OPC client. So what you've done is you created custom rules for sending the message out and custom rules for stripping the response for its value. So that's what Yukon does. Once you've actually configured the Yukon uh, structures and rules for different values within the device, so you'd create that string for value 100 and then you'd create another rule for 102 or 105 or whatever values you wanted, once you've created that and you've proven it with one of these devices, one of these bespoke devices, you can then put a password on the project to password protect it, so to make sure only you can use it. And then you can also copy and paste that device within your project and across projects. So once you've done it once, you've done it for good. So if you have a, a way scale that you commonly use on your projects, once you've done the Yukon project and created a Yukon device for that way scale, you can then use it again and again and again. Um, in addition to that, a single instance of Yukon can have different rules for different devices. So within one license of Yukon, you could have bespoke comms to more than one type of bespoke device. So with the Kepware Yukon server, you have the communications to the native serial PL, uh, Ethernet PLC, which is one that would be part of the, the uh, drivers, the, the pre-canned drivers from KEP server. And these ones on the left-hand side would be catered for by UCOM. 
So you've got the, the serial device, the Ethernet device, and on the left-hand side, you've got the serial through Ethernet. And this is a serial Ethernet bridge. So this would accept the serial to Ethernet communications from Kep server, and would then strip off the uh, the wrapper, the Ethernet wrapper, and send out the serial communications down to the local serial device. So those are particularly useful for for a legacy devices, perhaps at the end of a comms link, you don't want to put lots of wiring to it, you can use a local ethernet connection to that device. That's called ethernet encapsulation. So Yukon has been around for a few years and it's very useful for doing communications with legacy serial devices especially, but there's a new driver coming up called UDD. For certain uh, situations, uh, Yukon simply doesn't have enough power and flexibility, and there are types of communications coming along which Yukon, which we find Yukon can't handle. Um, some Ethernet devices, uh, devices which are IoT devices, edge devices, and cellular devices, these have come out and uh, emerged onto the market since Yukon was created, which is a few years ago now. So for those New types of protocol, uh, new types of devices, they use different types of protocols. They use IoT protocols, they use streaming protocols, they use perhaps protocols which are not from the industrial uh, field, or perhaps industrial protocols which are a little bit bespoke or a little bit away from the norm. So for that, there's a new driver coming out which is codenamed UDD. So Universal Device Driver, I believe that stands for. Now, that's not available yet, but it's been coming out in 2021. And that will be effectively a very, very powerful, up-to-date equivalent of Yukon. Yukon will still uh, stay around, but UDD will be added to the fold as well. So just to recap what we've looked at, we looked at bespoke devices on the shop floor and what they are, some of the challenges you face when approaching bespoke devices, some of the things you need to, to some of the ducks you need to get in a row, how the Yukon device driver works, and a little bit about this new UDD device driver that's coming out for next year. So um, thank you very much for attending this webinar this morning. My name is Dave Hammond. I'm the product manager for the Kepware software. Um, Mac Solutions have been the UK technical reseller for Kep server software for since 2001. And we also sell two other OPC software titles. Uh, one's from a Canadian company from, uh, called Cogent, which is the OPC um, data hub. And another one is called OPC Router, for, which is from a German company called InRay. Both of those are utilities or tools that can sit above the KEP server software. So thank you very much for attending today's webinar. And we hope that you all say stay safe and well. Thank you.